So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto unlocked chakra chains in waves. Part 2. If you guys enjoy this, what if? And you want to see part 2. Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. So let's start the video. Chapter 4. Walking along on his way to the academy dressed in a black skin tight t-shirt with black pants on. He also has his short sleeved black trench coat with the crimson fur on the inside on and left it open. He has his katana at his side and his wakizashi strapped horizontally to his lower back with a belt that holds his coat closed. He was just minding his own business when he saw someone nearby. He sees a girl his age whimpering quietly walking in the same direction as him while looking around almost frantically. She has dark blue almost black hair with pale white eyes. She is wearing a heavy looking beige jacket that makes it hard to tell how developed she is while wearing some dark blue ninja pants. All in all Naruto finds her to be quite cute. Hey, what's wrong? He asks quietly as he walks closer to her. Yep, she squeaks not hearing him approach her at all, she finds him to be quite stealthy. The girl turns around while wiping a straight tear from her eye and then stares at the boy. She instantly looks away with a mild blush on her face. She recognizes this boy, she has seen him running through the village pulling a woman who is dressed very inappropriately, in her mind, through the village, while she was standing on a heavy looking wagon filled with rocks. That would be Anko's style of workout all right. She was curious about him and followed him around that day. Ever since then she has been watching him from a distance. She really admires his strength and never gives up. Hello, how are you doing today? She asks quietly and shyly, if Naruto didn't have enhanced senses he would not have heard it at all. Am I doing well? What about you, and why are you looking all over the place? He replies back soothingly, trying to calm the nice girl down. I was going to the ninja academy for my first day, but I'm scared. What if I'm not good enough? If I don't do good their father will be very angry with me, and I won't have any friends. The girl replies sadly thinking this handsome boy would be the same as she was thinking. Is that all? He replies smiling his fox-like smile, making her heart turn to mush. I'm on my way there too, and I can help you out, no problem. I think that you'll be a great ninja if you work really hard at it. My name is Naruto by the way, Naruto Uzumaki. It's nice to meet you. He says politely while trailing off hoping for her to tell him her name. My name is Hinata Hayuga, heiress of the Hayuga clan. She responds meekly as she remembered her father telling her that it is okay if she associates with this boy, but she never knew why he would allow it, not that she would complain. Hayuga ha, huh? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. You guys have the Byakugan right? He asks her curiously while they both continue towards the ninja academy. Yes, we do. I haven't activated mine yet though, I think my father is displeased with me. She says while looking down and getting sad. What will Naruto-kun think of me if I can't even activate my bloodline? He must think I'm really weak and pathetic, just like Niji. No need to worry Hinata-chan, I'm sure you will get stronger soon enough. You just need to work hard and build up your confidence. I'm sure you will be a great Kanoichi someday. He says with a smile that takes her breath away. Thank you Naruto-kun. She says after a couple minutes of processing what he just said to her. He believes in me and thinks I'm going to be strong. I can't let him down. I have to be strong, and then maybe he will like me as much as I like him. She thought with the reddest face you could possibly imagine. She had always wished to be like this boy and has come to truly love every little thing about him in the time she spent observing him. They soon make it to the academy to see a bunch of students entering the building all at once crowding the place. Naruto and Hinata make their way into the doors and head to their class, both secretly wanting to be in the same class. Naruto finds Hinata to be cute and interesting, he also feels the need to help her with her confidence. Hinata's reason is a little obvious, she wants to be by his side all the time and get close to him. Soon they both find themselves in front of one of the rooms in the building for new students just starting the academy. Hey, are you going to this room too, Hinata-chan? Naruto asks his traveling companion. This is great, maybe we are in the same class and we can be friends. My senseis did tell me I need friends my age. I want more than just Kiba after all. Tsum had told him about her son, hoping that they would become good friends so she can get him and Hana together later. I am Naruto-kun, I guess this means we are in the same class together. She replies shyly. This is great. The next five years in the academy with Naruto-kun, sitting next to him every day. I have to work on my confidence and be strong to hopefully get together with him by the end of the academy. She thinks to herself with a beautiful pink tinge to her face. I guess it is Hinata-chan, which is great. Me and you are going to pass this and become great ninja, I'm sure of it. He is full of confidence, making Hinata a little jealous that she is not that confident, but she still respects him for it. 
they then enter the room together with Naruto opening the door for Hinata getting a smile from her, and they both look at all the ninja hopefuls. Only about half the class stands out to them. There is a boy with a little white dog on his head sitting with his head on the desk. He seems to have similar red marks on his cheeks that Tsum and the other Inuzukas have. There's Kiba, Naruto thinks. He is wearing a grey hooded jacket with black fur in the hood. The jacket is zipped up all the way, almost hiding the fishnet shirt under it completely. There is a boy sitting next to him with his hair up in a pineapple-like shape similar to Anko's. His hair is black though, he wears an open light grey jacket with a tight fishnet shirt under it. He seems to be sleeping on his desk next to Kiba. He learned from the old man his name was Shikamarinara. He actually knows all the kids' names in the class, having asked for them. Next to Shikamaru is a slightly chubby boy wearing a green jacket opened up with a beige shirt underneath it. He also had a white scarf around his neck. This would be Choji Akamichi. Up in a secluded desk all by himself is a guy wearing a big green jacket with a hood on his head. He has brown hair that is straight and hangs out of the hood a little. He is wearing some small black sunglasses and has a stoic look on his face. Naruto's gaze rests on him for a while, that is Shino Aburam. He is the heir to the Aburam clan. He is interested to get to know him due to hearing of the stoic attitude of most Aburams. On the other side of the room are a pink-haired girl wearing a red dress that hangs over some short blue ninja shorts. She has green sparkling eyes and seems to be aying some black-haired boy not far from her. The girl's name is Sakura Haruno, not that she is important, she seems to be too thin and frail. Probably because of the boy she is staring at. Fan girl Naruto thinks to himself she probably won't be a good ninja at all. She's cute, but not cute enough for him to start going for fangirls. Next to her is a pretty looking girl with light blonde hair and teal colored eyes. She is wearing a purple shirt that ends halfway down her stomach. Covering her stomach is some white medical tape. She also wore a purple colored skirt to match her shirt. On her arms are wide arm bands that only show off a small amount of her shoulders. She is also staring at the black haired boy across from them. She is not watching as intently as Sakura, but she is staring a bit. Her name is Ino Yamanaka. The black haired boy they are staring at seems to be brooding with his hands latched together holding his head up. He has black hair that, to Naruto, is shaped like a duck's ass. He is wearing a blue shirt with the Ichiha clan symbol on the back of it. He also has similar armbands to Ino. He has white shorts on and looks mean and indifferent to the two girls staring at him. That is Sasuke Ichiha. His family was killed by his older brother not too long before the academy started, because of that he just sits quietly and broods all the time, so not many girls are too interested in him at all. Only Sakura seems infatuated, and Ino has a small crush that will probably end sometime later. In front of the class was a man wearing the standard outfit. He had brown hair and a ponytail. He also had the Kanoha headband on with a blue cloth holding the plate on his head. This was their primary instructor, Hiroka. There was another man talking to him, possibly about the curriculum and the new students. He had light blue hair, it was almost white. He had his high eight headband, not sure how to spell it, as a bandana with the plate on the front of his head. His name is Mizuki, they both then turn to the class after a short conversation. Alright class, settle down and everyone takes a seat. Naruto and Hinata head up to where Shino is sitting. Haruka says politely, not seeing the angry glare that Mizuki is sending towards the back of his head. Hey, my name is Naruto Yuzumaki, and this is my friend Hinata Hayuga. What's your name? He asks when he sits next to the headed guy, who seems surprised at his introduction. Being an Aburam, people think they are weird being able to talk and control bugs from inside their bodies. I am Shino Aburam, Naruto-san. It is nice to meet your acquaintance, Hinata-san. He says in a monotone voice while on the inside he is curious about the boy next to him. Shino doesn't have any friends other than his insects, so he always wanted a friend to talk to, but just waited for someone to start up the conversation. Nice to meet you in Shino-san. Hinata replies softly, also seeing earlier that he was sitting alone and feeling a little sad, but also relieved that she isn't the only one who felt all alone. The three of us are going to be great friends. She finishes in her mind happily. It is nice to meet you as well, Shino. Hopefully we will be great friends and ninja together, and please just call me Naruto. He says calmly trying to stay focused in school to learn. Their thoughts were interrupted by Aruka. Alright this is the ninja academy, and we will be teaching you how to be a successful ninja of the leaf village. I am Aruka Yamino, and this is my assistant Mizuki. We will now go through a roll call. Shino Aburam, followed by a quiet present. This went on until Naruto Uzumaki. Haruka didn't hate the boy, but he still didn't trust him very much. Nonetheless he called his name calmly and nicely receiving a here. He would treat him like any other student and try to be fair to him. He has heard the stories about his abuse, all of the ninja in the village have. Most of the ninja respect his strength, knowing how hard it is to stay sane in the cruel ninja world. 
only a small percentage actually didn't like him, while some were indifferent. Mizuki is probably the only one to actually hate his guts anymore though. In the first year we are going to learn about the history of the Leaf Village. Followed by some regular lessons on economics, maths, writing, and some of the other civilian teachings that everyone should know. The second year will be a little bit more advanced civilian teaching, and we will begin some physical skills and more hands-on learning, like kunai and shuriken throwing. We will also be doing some exercises and outdoor survival teaching along with stealth and how to lead a team. The third year will be the starting of some basic tojutsu and muscle building workouts. We will also work on some speed and refining your stealth. The fourth year will be ninjutsu theory followed by teaching the most basic that may just save your life in any battle. We will work on those until you have mastered them completely. The fifth and final year we will be putting all the ninja fields together and reviewing the academy. We will refine your speed, strength, and tojutsu and prepare you for your ninja career. Time skip five years. Naruto, wearing his normal clothes with his katana and wakizashi in the normal places at his side and horizontally on his back respectively, is seen walking around the village. He is now 13 years old but looks older, around 16 or 17. He is basically a clone of the fourth Hokage, but with whisker marks on his cheeks. He is around 6'5", weighing about 250 pounds of mostly muscle. His six-pack is now fully defined to the point that it looks like Kami carved it from the hardest stone imaginable and sculpted a masterpiece. He is ripped, with bulging biceps that are not too big, but just perfect in a woman's eyes. His hair is still around shoulder length, not wanting it to get too long, but it is still as spiky and untamed as it always was. His beautiful blue eyes make any woman almost faint from the sight of him looking over at them. His innocent expressions force them to do everything in their power not to jump him on the spot. He has made a good impression on the teachers of the academy, most of them even the ones that didn't necessarily like him, say he is easily at low to mid-level. He is downright deadly, most people would hate to go head to head in a sword fight with him. His tojutsu is also really good, but not as good as his. His ninjutsu is advanced due to his work on his chakra control in Cage Bunshin. He has a pretty strong set of his senses having been taught the secret of Cage Bunshin. He still only has the one strong from Kurinai to hide his scars with, other than that nothing that is effective works for him. He has also become quite adept as well, he is not a master by any means, but he can tell a lot of different seals out from others and eventually break them down and learn how they work. He is easy, maybe even, but he purposely let his academics drop a bit after that, aiming to be just average. He really just wanted to stay with his best friends Kiba, Shikamaru, Choji, Ino, Hinata, and Shino. He had made a lot of progress towards the civilians as well in the village, with about 55% respecting him and liking him. Around 15% still don't like him, but leave him alone, and the last 30% are just plain indifferent. Hinata and Shino have become closer to Naruto also. Hinata is in love, but she has been all along. Shino has found a good friendship between them, as Naruto constantly defended him against some bullies, even if he didn't ask or need him to do so. He sees him as a great person and friend, and he also knows how Hinata feels about him, but has chosen to keep it to himself. Hinata has grown much better as a ninja and person. She is much more confident, not stuttering at all around anyone anymore. She is one of the best girls in the class. Shino has also become more outgoing due to being around Naruto for the five years they were friends. He now talks much more than he did, not just talking when he felt he had something relevant to add. Tiba quickly became one of Naruto's best friends in the academy also. He is loyal and always helps out, it is probably because he can sense the alpha material in Naruto. Akamaru, Kiba's companion, also likes Naruto and will obey him when needed. Naruto had gotten much closer to Hana as well, and he really likes her too, but he is conflicted at liking more than one girl. Hana has also talked to Anko and A.M. about sharing the blonde hot eye after a couple years of friendship with them, because while the Inuzuka are territorial with their mates, they can also learn to share, but they will quickly attack any others that they don't approve of. The kids in the class see him as a really cool and nice guy, and everyone at least gets along with him. All except Sasuke and Sakura. Sasuke hates him because of his strength and that he is better than him, and Sakura doesn't really hate him, but she just follows Sasuke's horrible example. Naruto spent time during the five years getting some extra training on the side from his senseis from before the academy, becoming closer and closer to them, especially Anko. He is starting to get worried about having to choose one of the girls to date. That's why he is on his way to the Hokage Tower to ask his Jiji for help. When he gets to the Hokage Tower he greets the receptionist who is the same one who has been working there for the last six years now. They quickly became friends but nothing more than that. They got along quite well with each other. Then he sees the old man behind the desk grumbling. Something about paperwork and how it is the bane of his existence. Hey, Jiji. I came to ask you for some help. Oh, and what do you need help with Naruto-kun? 
he asks genuinely curious. Well. I wanted some advice. I really came to like my sensei Anko, but I also like Hinata from the academy and Hana in Yuzuka and AM from Ichirikus. I was wondering if you knew what I should do. He asks timidly, a little embarrassed to be asking him a question like that. The old man just grins at his grandson's predicament, knowing full well what he is going to say to him. He is trying his best to hold his laughter for when he sees the look on his face. Date them all he says simply. What? I can't do that to them, they deserve better than that, and besides they hate perverts. There is no way they would agree to share with me. He says frowning. Remember what I told you all those years ago, something about me telling you when you're older. Well that time is now, you see, you are the last of the Uzumaki bloodline. It is much too rare to die out, so the council has agreed to place you under the craw. That is short for the Clan Restoration Act, and you will need to marry multiple women. Naruto just blanks out and stares for a while, then does what most would do. Passed out. Well that went well. The old man thinks while well, laughing uncontrollably. Shortly later Naruto wakes up and looks around to find himself on the ground in front of the Hokage's desk. Wow, old man, I just had the craziest dream ever. I came to you and asked for dating advice, and you told me I was under some clan restoration act or something. He says, shaking his head from the haze. I did Naruto-kun, you need at least five to seven wives. He says calmly, while grumbling about young and lucky bastards. Naruto's jaw hits the ground at that. Five to seven wives. That is a little ridiculous to him, but if he has to have at least five wives, then all the girls he likes will be with him, and maybe more that he meets along the way. Am I going to be included in your harem, a Naruto Kuun Kayashi purrs to him suggestively, while hoping for a yes. If that makes you happy Haim. Thinking to her teasingly while happy that she wants to be his first wife. They have gotten very close in the last couple years and talked every day. Ayubi blushes like crazy at being called princess and is also letting tears of joy fall from her beautiful face. I have finally found the one, the perfect person for me to be mates with. This is the best day of my life. She thinks happily, while running around and grabbing a nearby baby fox. He loves me, he really loves Kitsune chan I'm so happy. She yells while holding the young baby fox, while the fox just wags its tail in happiness for its friend. Now that his problem is solved, Naruto heads to the academy for his final test. The test that will make him into a full-grown ninja in the eye of the village. The test will be the very first step in attaining his dreams. Chapter 5. Naruto is now headed to Hinata's house to pick her up and walk to the academy together like they do every day. Good morning Naruto-kun, ready for us to become genin. She asks confidently as she has really changed to the liking of her clan and herself. Her father had been very encouraging of her being close to Naruto, even if the elders are not too pleased about the situation. Hell yay, Hinata-chan. I've been ready for years now. So let's hurry to Shino's house and get him. He replies confidently and they head out on their way. They have been doing this together for years now, so she just nods and follows him. As they approach the Aburam clan home, they see Shino waiting for them patiently like he always does. Naruto sees him and smiles, hey Shino, how are you today? I'm good, Naruto. How are you and Hinata-chan doing today? I'm doing well today, Shino-kun. Thanks for asking. Hinata replies, while she is inwardly nervous. This was the day that she would confess her feelings for Naruto. I wonder how he'll take it. She wonders. I'm good too, so are you ready to make Genin? He asks as they begin their journey to the academy. I think all of us are going to make it no problem. I think I am ready for Naruto, but you have been ready to be at least for a couple years now, maybe more, and everyone knows it at the academy. Shino replies with a light chuckle as Hinata joins in giggling too as they continue on their way. They soon enter the academy and sit in their normal seats that they have always sat in ever since they first met on the first day. They always enjoyed sitting in the back of the class and talking to each other and their other friends, while well, Laruka sensei taught the others the things they already knew. Hey Naruto. What's up bro, are you ready to pass this test and become a ninja? A voice calls out and Naruto turns to look at his best friend Kiba. Hey Kiba, I'm 100% sure I'm gonna pass, and I'm doing good today. How about you and Akamaru, think you're gonna pass? He questions back with a smile. Of course we're gonna pass Naruto, what do you take us for? Kiba replies back with a laugh, which Naruto joins in on and Shino, Hinata, and him take their seats after wishing him luck. Troublesome, hey Naruto how's it going? His good friend Shikamaru replies from in front of him sounding bored. Hey Shika, I'm good, how about you? So you're gonna pass or just say it's too troublesome and give up? Is his humorous reply with a hint of sarcasm, meaning it to be a joke and not an insult. Shikamaru just grins at his friend's comment and replies, you know my mom, it would be way too troublesome to hear her nag about me failing this test, so I guess I have to pass. Well I know you don't need it, but good luck anyway man. 
Naruto says back as he knew about the Nara clan, having been invited over before. Alright, class settles down. Haruka says trying to calm the teens down doesn't work. Quiet down please. Still nothing, shut up you idiots, I'm talking to you he screams with his patented big head. Seeing the fear-stricken students' faces is always hilarious, which is another reason he likes to do that to them. Seeing that they are calm he begins, alright class today is the final day of the ninja academy. I just want to say it's been an honor teaching you all these last five years. When I call your name you will follow me into the dojo for target practice and the academy. Shino Aburam gets up and starts to walk up but feels someone grab his arm and turn around. Good luck Shino. Naruto says, and Shino just nods in understanding with a quick thank you to his friend. Shortly, later he comes out with a smile on his normally stoic face and goes to Naruto and gets congratulated. This goes on for a while, with Naruto giving Hinata a kiss on the cheek and she also passes the test. Naruto Uzumaki then stands up but feels an arm grab him, Hinata was hanging on his arm and she kisses him on the cheek. He blushes a bit but can stand up to it more with all the teasing he gets from Enko, Kayashi, A.M. and Hana. Good luck Naruto-kun she says with a beautiful pink tint to her face and a smile. Don't worry so much you, I'll pass no problem then we'll all go out to dinner, my treat. He replies as he is walking away. Naruto enters the dojo to see Aruka smiling at him and he smiles back. He then notices Mizuki glaring at him from behind Aruka and mentally frowns. He has always treated him a bit unfairly from then on. Alright you have 10 kunai and 10 shuriken each, you have to hit the targets from 30 meters away. 10 points for every bull's eye, 7 for other miscellaneous kill shots. You need at least 70 points to pass on each, not like that's a problem though, you always do way better than that. Haruka finishes smiling. Good luck. Naruto heads to the line and slows his breathing, he feels the weight of the in his hands and pictures where he wants to hit the targets. After a short while he lets them all fly at the same time. All 10 sail through the air at a good speed and great balance. They each impact the target and Naruto just turns around for the shuriken to see the faces of his instructors. Both of their jaws are now touching the ground. He just got a perfect score each one of the kunai hitting the middle circle of the target. 100 points huh, that's my best yet. Awesome. Naruto nods happily. You just got 100 points, how is that possible? 70, I could see, but 100 that's highly advanced, especially for throwing them all at the same time. Hiruka states in disbelief. Mizuki just looks pissed off, damn demon, I need him to get the forbidden scroll of sealing, how can I convince him if he doesn't fail? He keeps to himself. Well, I'll record that for the record books, here are the 10 shuriken now. Throw them whenever you are ready. Haruka says proudly. Alright Naruto says as he takes the shuriken and heads back to the same line he was at before. Concentrating once again, he looks to the targets with all the shuriken in his hands. Soon, he lets them fly and like the kunai he gets perfect scores. The teachers are now gaping, it wasn't luck like they thought after all, he is really that good. Congratulations Naruto, but you're not done yet, you have to do the henge, kawarimi, and the bunshin. Haruka stated proudly. Alright, easy. He replies as he enters Mizuki and replaces himself with the desk both of them were sitting behind. Can I do a different bunshin though, I have too much chakra to perform the regular one. He asks with his voice filled with hope. I suppose that's okay Naruto, any type you know will do. Hiruka replies kindly, while Mizuki is fuming inwardly. He would have to find someone else to get the scroll. Sweet, then here goes Cage Bunshin. Naruto says as 15 solid clones appear in the room in perfect rows of 5, with 3 in each row. Cage Bunshins, how on earth did you learn that, that's a level Bunshin? Who taught that to you? Mizuki questions, barely hiding the venom in his voice. Naruto and Aruka can sense a little of the hostility and frown, Anko taught it to me when I couldn't perform the regular Bunshin, and I just asked her for help. The Hokage said that it would be alright if I learned it too. He replies calmly, not letting the man's words get him down. Well, either way you pass Naruto. Congratulations. Haruka replies happily and hands him a Naruto accepts it and switches the regular blue cloth for a crimson one and puts it on his head and spins it so the plate is on the left side of his head instead of on his forehead. Naruto then enters the regular classroom with his best smile, making most of the girls blush from his good looks. He actually had many fangirls in the village instead of Sasuke because of how he acts all the time. He takes his seat in between his two best friends and they congratulate him on a job well done. Hey Naruto, how many points did you get on the target practice test? Hinata whispers while Shino listens in as they were both wondering how good he did on the test. I got 200 points. He whispers back like it's no big deal and grins both of their shocked faces. Team placements will be next week in the same spot around 8.30 am, so don't miss them for anything. Haruka states as the new genin leaves the school as he watches them all leave while smiling happily. 
but the day at the academy Don, Hinata, Shino, and Naruto head over to his favorite spot, Ichirakus. Hey am chan can the new ninja of the leaf get some service over here? Naruto asks playfully as he sits down. Am then looks at him and smiles while walking to the other side of the counter and hugging him tightly. This didn't seem to sit well with Hinata as she glared at her for a bit before letting it go, as she just hoped it was a brother and sister type bond. Am saw this and was a bit worried as she, Hana, and Anko were going to try and share him, but she was just a normal Raymond girl and not a ninja. She felt like she would lose him to the others and didn't really want any more girls in their group. Congratulations Naruto-kun, you too, Hinata-chan and Shino-kun. She said, shaking off her mountain of mixed feelings. Thanks, they all reply together while Naruto gives her a tight hug, making her blush a bit as she sees him blush too, giving her a lot of hope. Am then gets to work on their usual orders, seeing the meat there often makes her remember them by heart. So, do you two know of anybody who didn't pass the test of our grade? Naruto asks. He had heard about the fangirls all failing. Well most of your fangirls failed along with Sakura Haruno. Shino replies well somewhat happy that they will have less fangirls to deal with. Yay, that's all I heard too. Hinata adds in. Yeah, that's about all I heard too. Maybe if they would have trained harder they could have passed with us, but there's always next time. Shortly after they get their food and start to eat while talking about everyday things. Suddenly Kiba with Akamaru, Choji, and Shikamaru all ran into the stand wearing their new headbands in a hurry. Hey Naruto, you know that one girl, Sakura Haruna right? She stole the forbidden scroll of sealing, and the Hokage is ordering all ninja available to find her. Kiba says quickly while also trying to catch his breath. Well, catch your breath for a while, me, Shino, and Hinata will head out to search for her. I'll give you guys five minutes to catch your breath and then go the opposite way that we go. Stick together and don't try to scare her off too much alright, Hinata, Shino, time to go. Naruto states in a serious voice, the voice of a true leader. All of his friends obey him without question, and the group of three, two boys and a girl head out followed five minutes later by another group of three, this one all guys. Alright you two, Hinata-chan I need you to activate your and search all around for Sakura. Shino I need you to send your bugs out in all the directions we aren't currently going towards. I will also send out cage bunchons to search as well, understand. He says calmly while his two teammates just follow his orders with no hesitation. Something about the blonde just made you want to help him in any way you could. Hi they both respond and get to their tasks. I will alert you if my bugs find anything, Shino says calmly. After spending around 15 minutes Shino's bugs finally spot Sakura. Naruto, Sakura are about a mile to our east looking through the forbidden scroll. He says calmly. Alright, good job Shino, can you see her Hinata-chan? Naruto asks. Hi, but that's not all. It seems like Mizuki and Aruka-sensei are on their way towards her also. I estimate that Aruka will be there in one minute and Mizuki in two. She says quickly while trying to catch her breath. Alright we should be there in about four and a half or five minutes if we hurry, start channeling more chakra to your legs and let go. However, he sees they are tired, never mind you two, you should rest up and I'll go on ahead alone. What, but we want to help you, we aren't too tired. Hinata says, trying to convince him to stay. He's right Hinata-chan, we won't make it in time, with his stamina he will make it, plus there are two senseis there to help. He will be fine. Shino says acting as the voice of reason even if he wants to go too. Seeing his point, she reluctantly agrees, alright you go ahead and we'll catch up later. The two friends then sit down and watch him disappear into the night. Be safe please Naruto kun Hinata thinks. Naruto soon makes it to see Mizuki up in a tree and Aruka against an old shack with kunai surrounding him and one deep into his left leg. Sakura, don't give him the scroll he is trying to trick you to take. Aruka yells out. Don't listen to him Sakura, he is just trying to make it so you can't get Sasuke. He doesn't want you to find the man of your dreams. Mizuki says equally as loud as Aruka, and the worst part is Sakura is believing him. I'll get Sasuke come to love me no problem, Aruka sensei must be jealous that I found true love and he didn't. She screeches dumbly, only with slight hesitation as she is really scared. She then starts walking over to the tree Mizuki is in and is about to throw the scroll up to him. Hey Sakura, I wouldn't give that scroll to him, he is a traitor to the village, and you're just playing right into his hands. Naruto calmly states as he walks out into the open getting everyone's attention on him. Haha, the demon ha, huh? I never thought I would see you here. Mizuki taunts him. You probably want the scroll for yourself, but first, tell me do you know why people seem to hate you? Mizuki asks. Why? Naruto asks pretending to not know, even though he has known for many years now. Mizuki, no it's against the Sandame's law, it's forbidden. Iruka yells hoping to stop him from telling the truth to Naruto. Thirteen years ago the nine-tailed fox attacked our village and killed many of our civilians and ninja. 
The beast was said to be unstoppable, there was no way the fourth Hokage could kill the fox, so he sealed it away into a baby boy. You were that boy Naruto, you are the nine-tailed fox. Mizuki yells and starts laughing like a crazy person. Wah what, he is the fox. Sakura asks, getting confused and really scared. She never really liked Naruto, he always beat Sasuke in their spars. If Mizuki is saying he is the nine-tailed fox, then it must be true. He's a demon, I have to spread the word to everyone, and then Sasuke-kun will love me. He must have been cheating in all of those spars anyway. She thinks dumbly. Aha, you're one hell of a fool Mizuki. Me and Kayashi-chan are completely different beings. I've already known about the fox for about six years. Naruto finally admits. This seems to make Mizuki angry, really then. Well I guess it's time to kill you demons. He says as he grabs his giant shuriken off his back getting ready to throw it. He then does, but something unexpected for everyone happens, as Naruto is reaching for his katana and readying a technique with his chakra chains, Shino and Hinata jump in front of him and each throw a kunai to deflect the giant shuriken. Now Naruto is worried, what if they heard what he said, will they still like me? He thought sadly, but he realized that it's not the time to be depressed, so he issued his orders. Shino, Hinata-chan go and get Sakura and the scroll back to the Hokage, while me and Aruka stay to fight. He says calmly, while still a bit scared of their reaction to him. They both look back at him, and he can tell that they don't think any differently about him, which makes him very happy inside. Alright Naruto-kun, right away. Hinata replies, let's go Shino-kun. Seeing his nod both of them go to grab Sakura, when she resists, Hinata is forced to knock her out, while Shino takes the scroll. Hey, give me that scroll. Mizuki commands as he jumps as fast as he can at the unsuspecting friends. Too bad he wasn't fast enough as Naruto hit him from the side. If you ever lay a hand on Hinata-chan or Shino, I'll kill you. Naruto says in a voice that would make any sane man wet himself, but it reassures his two friends that he is truly a good person and a great friend. Unfortunately Mizuki is not a sane man at all. Oh, really now? What are you gonna do to stop me? I'll destroy you with one punch. He yells arrogantly, completely missing the fact that Hinata and Shino are long gone now. Try it fool, give me your best shot, and I'll return it 1000 fold. Naruto states in the same tone as earlier. Page Bunshin, Naruto called out and Mizuki's eyes then widened in fear, all around were hundreds of shadow clones. They are covering the area all around, in the trees and on the ground. Well Mizuki team, if you're just gonna stand there I guess we'll come to you and Mizuki's eyes widen as they see all the clones waiting and watching Mizuki. Incredible, he can make this many and still keep going. Haruka thinks to himself as he watches in awe. What the hell, this must be the demon's power at work. Mizuki thinks as if he could only stare in fear and wait for the beating of a lifetime. He doesn't have to wait long as all the clones jump down on him and start punching and kicking away at him, leaving only a bruised body in the shape of Mizuki left on the ground. Heh, maybe I overdid it a little bit. Naruto says scratching the back of his head after the massive beatdown. That was incredible Naruto, good thing you made it here when you did, I could have been much worse off if you didn't. Hiroka says honestly. Come on, you can help take me to the hospital, I'm sure Hinata and Shino have already made it back to the Hokage and are fixing the problem. Once they make it to the hospital, Hiruzen is outside waiting for them with a couple of medics as he stares proudly at Naruto. I see you have made it back in one piece, Hiroka kun He said to them happily. Hiroka just smiles sheepishly as Naruto grins brightly. I did it with Naruto's help, Hokage-sama. Without him, I surely would have died there. He said with gratitude, while Naruto began to blush a bit in embarrassment at their proud looks. Ah, yes. I had heard of the success. I'm proud of you Naruto-kun, and I'm sure your clan and your parents would be proud as well. He said happily as the medics took Aruka away. I had also received the Hidden Villages scroll from Shino-kun and Hinata-chan, along with Sakura Haruno. What will happen to her anyway? She has still failed, I'm afraid and even if she somehow took the scroll, she can't pass. He stated simply. Now head on home and be ready to be placed on a team tomorrow, Naruto-kun. In the Hokage's office the next day, there are a bunch of people standing patiently in front of Hiruzen's desk. Hey, Nai-chan, can you believe it? The Hokage is giving me a chance to be a sensei. Anko asks, standing next to all her friends, pretty much bouncing up and down in excitement. She had really always wanted to be a sensei and attain rank, but the council had turned her down all the time. Thankfully, the Hokage had finally gotten it through, and she was now proud. In honor of her new promotion, she had decided to cover up a bit, and she wore the standard jacket proudly, as she could now show off her new rank. Secretly though, she had put something on so Naruto would be happy that she wouldn't be showing so much. She also changed her burnt orange skirt to mid-thigh burnt orange shorts instead. I think you would make a great sensei Anko-chan, just try not to hurt them too much. 
Kurinai says playfully with a small giggle, with Hana and Yugao joining in on. Oh, that's no fun Nai Chan, I won't have my team considered weak. It would make me look bad to the village, well worse anyway. She says getting a bit sad, she was always treated unfairly and hasn't had many people like her for being herself. The only ones she worried about liking her were Hana and Yuzuka, Tsuma and Yuzuka, Yugao Yuzuki, Kurinai Yuuhi and her favorite, Naruto Yuzumaki. Kurinai, seeing this, tries to comfort her. Don't listen to what the other people of the village think of Anko-chan. She whispers softly to her friend. Think about Naruto-kun, he was hated, beaten, stabbed, burned, and other terrible things because of what he holds. If he can deal with that, then I know you can deal with this, you're a strong woman after all Anko-chan. The yeah, Anko-chan don't get so down you know we all love you. Hana adds in with Yugao nodding along with the other two women. Anko then starts to think, and a smile comes to her face, not a sadistic creepy smile, but a beautiful genuine smile. You're right Nai-chan, if Nerukun can handle it, then I can too. I also love you three like family as well. Naruto has truly become her rock and is a great inspiration to her. Ever since they met, his never give up attitude, no matter how hard things got motivated her and got her through the days. Without Naruto, she would have probably been depressed all the time and distance herself from everyone. Alright, let's begin the assignment of the senseis. The elderly voice of the Sandame Hokage calls out, shaking all the others in the room from their conversations and personal thoughts. Team 1 sensei will be, I'm skipping these until Team 7. Team 7 sensei will be Anko Midarashi, teaching Kiba and Yuzuka, Sai, and Naruto Yuzumaki. Purposely keeping a delay for mentioning Naruto's name, waiting to see how Anko will respond. No way Anko screams mentally, did he just say I get to teach Naruto-kun. What? I get to teach Naruto-kun. Anko screams happily, and then blushes, hoping that nobody noticed the kun suffix of his name. Kun? Is something going on between you and Naruto? A lazy-sounding man with gravity-defying silver hair says to her. He wears his headband on a diagonal with it covering his left eye. He also has a black ninja mask covering his face up to the middle of his nose. Shut up Kakashi. All the girls yell together, speaking in Anko's defense, making him even more sure that he is right. The increasing blush on her face helps too, not that he minded. He knew who Naruto was after all. This is the best thing to ever happen to me. Anko says almost crying in joy while her friends all smile happily that their close friend and sister in all but blood is happy. They of course knew that she was in love with a little hot blonde, just like Hana was. Moving on, teammate sensei would be Kurinai Yuuhi teaching Shino Aburam, Hinata Hayuga, and Sasuke Cha. Team 9 is already made from last year, so Team 10 sensei will be Asuma Suratobi teaching Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, and Choji Akamichi. Chapter 6. In the classroom on the day of the team placements, Naruto and all his friends couldn't wait to see whose team they were on. Naruto and his friends were sitting at their usual spot in the class with Shino, and Hinata said she had to go to the bathroom. But that situation with Mizuki, I didn't confess to him, I should do it after school today. Hinata thought with a blush as she washed up and thought of how she was going to do it. I'm ready to do it, I will after school, I could ask him to take a walk with me and go to the Hokage Monument. Hinata has now made her mind up about her little plan and starts to head into the classroom to her seat next to Naruto. What she didn't know is that as she moves towards Naruto, Sakura is telling everyone in the village that Naruto is a demon and that he should not be trusted. Some seemed to listen to her while some of the ones who had really changed for the better defended him. This seems to spread as the others who seem to listen to the ones who say he is not the demon but a good boy. This makes Sakura really angry. She stomps off going home because even with the forbidden scroll, she didn't have enough chakra to use anything in it. Damn these stupid villagers, they should be agreeing and praising me, not calling me a liar. Now Sasuke Kun won't like me anymore. Hinata sits down next to the curious looking Naruto. So, what took you so long? Thinking about me Naruto asks teasingly. She was gone for a while and they never hide anything from each other, so he's really curious. Oh nothing Naruto Kun says, blushing a bit, only serving to make him more suspicious. Oh, please tell me, I promise I wouldn't tell anyone else. Naruto pleads, making his best puppy dog eyes look. Seeing the really cute look, she is forced to hold herself to her seat to stop herself from glomping onto him at how cute he is. Sorry, but you'll find out later Naruto-kun, I promise. Hinata says while struggling to hold her resolve under his puppy dog eyes looking right at her. HMPH Naruto just looks away and pouts weakening her resolve some more, but she sets up a perfect plan to break it to him, and she wants it to be perfect. I'm sure she will tell you Naruto, just later, Shino replies, knowing what she is talking about and chuckles a bit at the interaction. Oh come on, you guys should know most of all that I hate surprises. I can't wait that long. He complains childishly which only makes them and some others who overheard them chuckle more. 
They are all brought out of their thoughts when they hear, good morning class, or should I say Jenin. Haruka says proudly, this was a fun group of students to teach. Alright everyone I just want to say I'm very proud of all of you, and it was an honor to teach you all. Now let's start the team placements. Team 1 will be, I'm skipping until team 7 like I did earlier. Team 7 will be Naruto Uzumaki, Kiba Inuzuka, and Sai under the Jounin Sensei of Anko Midarashi. Naruto and Kiba are happy to be on the same team, and Naruto is happy about having Anko as their sensei, but he is a little sad that Hinata and Shino are not on his team, also he has never heard of the other person on their team. Hey, Iruka sensei who is Sai? Kiba asks, interrupting Iruka, probably wondering the same thing that Naruto is. Well there weren't enough students to pass the test, so Hokage-sama had found a suitable genin level ninja and added him to your team. Oh, okay. The mate will be Shino Aburam, Hinata Hayuga, and Sasuke Ichiha under the Jounin Sensei Kurina Yuuhi. Team 9 is already made, so Team 10 will be composed of Ino Yamanaka, Choji Akamichi, and Shikamaru Nara under the Jounin Sensei Asuma Suratobi. Hiroka finishes. Hinata and Shino are happy to at least be on each other's team, but are a little sad that Naruto isn't with them. They are also not too happy at having Sasuke on their team and are at least hoping that their sensei will keep him in line. They both already knew a little about their sensei hearing that she is the mistress of Konoha, and Kurinai had brought Hinata to class sometimes. Ino Yamanaka is a little bit sad at not being on Sasuke's team, but has been having some second thoughts of pursuing him anyway. She just hopes that her other teammates are at least nice to hang out around. Choji and Shikamaru are happy too, they are just hoping to get along with Ino, while Shikamaru hopes that she is not bossy. Sasuke is absolutely indifferent to his teammates, just hoping they won't get in the way of his ambitions. All right everyone wait here for your senses to pick you up and good luck in the future and keep the village as your number one thing to protect. Hiroka says as he leaves the school. All right, I'm gonna give all my super awesome entrance, you guys should go in first and then I'll come in. Anko says with one of the biggest grins ever on her face. Ugh, fine let's go then. Kurinai says as she leaves the Hokage's office. This is going to be so awesome, I can't wait to see the looks on Naruto-kun's face when he sees my amazing entrance. Anko thinks to herself happily, while hoping he really thinks it's cool. As the students are all waiting, a new kid comes into the room. He is a deathly pale white, while wearing black ninja pants on, and he wears a short black jacket with red straps. Also on his back is a small backpack on. On his back is a tanto. The rest of his outfit consisted of shinobi sandals and gloves, with his index fingers and thumbs exposed. I am Sai. The boy says simply. I am to be placed on a team with Naruto Uzumaki and Kiba in Yuzuka. Where are they? He questions even more stoically than Shino was before he met Naruto. That would be me, I'm Naruto and the guy with the dog on his head is Kiba in Yuzuka, and the dog would be Akimaru. Nice to meet you Sai. Naruto responds kindly while looking over the new genin. Yay, it's nice to meet you as well. Kiba responds also, doing the same as Naruto does. Sai just nods and sits down to wait for the team sensei. Both of them find him a bit weird, and especially that he is wearing a jacket that only covers half of his torso, but they won't judge, and they hope they can get along. Shortly a man with brown eyes, short, black spiky hair and a beard. His clothing consisted of the standard Kanohe ninja uniform with the sleeves rolled up halfway, a flak jacket, regular shinobi sandals and forehead protector. He also wore the 12 guardian ninja sash that had the kanji for fire marked on it around his waist. Alright team 10, you're with me, I am Asuma Suratobi. Next to him was one of Naruto's old senseis, Kurina Yuuhi, and she was staring at him. He looked into her eyes and she looked back and waved happily at him, which he returned quickly. I am Kurina Yuuhi, and I am the sensei for team. She was cut off by two kunai flying through the window and sticking into the ceiling with a banner attached to them. A black blur then shot through the already broken window and landed in front of the banner that read, the great, the powerful, the sexy and single Anko Midarashi revealing her with a shit-eating grin on her face. I am Anko Midarashi, and I am Team 7 Sensei. She says loudly only to find the student staring at her like she has a second head. Woohoo, that was awesome Anko Sensei, it was perfect. Naruto yells out and starts clapping, making the woman blush and smile. He was also happy that she had finally covered herself up more so that no other guys could see her. That thought got him to blush a little as he was quite possessive of the women he likes. Ha! Ah, I knew he would like it Anko thought to herself. Thanks Gaki, now gather the team and meet in front of training ground 44 in 30 minutes. She then jumps out the same window, leaving a somewhat fuming Kurinai because she was interrupted. As I was saying before, I am Kurinai Yuuhi and I am teammate sensei. Come with me. She says while walking away as Naruto and his teammates all jump out the broken window, but not before Hinata tells him to meet her later. Alright guys we have about 5 more minutes to get their legs to speed up a bit. 
Naruto says while taking charge and both comply with little thought. Strange, I already feel at least in his presence. Sai thinks to himself. Danzo is his master, Sai is from Danzo's root program and is supposed to only do what Danzo commands. However, Naruto's orders remind him of his lost brother Shin. His voice doesn't have any type of fear laced into his words to force me to follow, strange indeed. He finishes his thoughts as they make it to where Anko told them to. Not bad, they made it in time, not too surprising with Naruto on this team. He is almost level already. Anko says mentally. Well good work getting here, we will introduce ourselves and then be done for the day, you guys will have a test tomorrow after all. She says with a grin that makes them all shiver. I'll go first. I am Anko Midarashi. I like my friends Kurunai-chan, Hana-chan, Yuga-chan, and Tsum-chan. I also love to eat dango and drink sake. I dislike perverts, rapists, traitors, child beaters, and anyone who judges people before even knowing them. My dream is to one day settle down with someone I love and have a big family. I'll go next then, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, I like foxes, ramen, my friends, the village, and training. I dislike child beaters, rapists, and people who threaten my friends and my village. My dream is to be a legendary ninja, known all over the world when I grow up. I also want to rebuild my clan and have a nice family with the ones I love. Naruto finishes determinedly getting smiles from Anko and Kiba, while Sai seems a bit conflicted. Alright, name Kiba and Yuzuka, I like my friends, dogs, my companion Akamaru, and training. I dislike people who hurt animals and people who screech and are too loud, it hurts my ears. I also dislike traitors and people who threaten my friends and village. My dream is to be the best in Yuzuka clan head and to have a family. Kiba responds. My name is Sai, I don't really know what I like and I don't dislike anything. I don't think I have any dreams. Sai finishes stoically while doing his best to think of something to say. Weird everyone thinks together as they slowly come to terms with their weird student teammate. Uh, okay then. Like I said go home and rest up for tomorrow you will all be having a test to see if I will train you or send you back to the academy crying. Meet here at 6am tomorrow, Jana. She says and shunshins out of there. Alright then. I guess we better prepare for this test then, don't worry about it though I'm sure if we work together we can pass the test. Naruto says and grins when he sees both of them nod. Alright then, go home and rest and remember to get up early to get a good breakfast for tomorrow. I'll meet you guys here tomorrow. Naruto says and also shunshins out of the area to his apartment to get ready to meet up with Hinata. On his way over to the spot where he was asked to meet up with Hinata, Naruto begins to think of how he will tell her and the other women he is interested in about the craw. I wonder how they'll take it, I hope they don't try to beat me into the ground. I do remember the time Anko caught me staring at her though. He wasn't hit or anything, just tortured with her teasing, I wonder which I could stand more, beatings or Anko's teasing. He ponders seriously on his journey. In the distance he hears his name and looks to his beautiful friend coming towards him. I thought we could talk a walk, the two of us, we will be much busier now that we are ninja, so let's have some fun. Hinata says, and then they begin their walk towards the Hokage Monument. As they approach it Naruto gets nervous, choosing to start his explanation of the Kra, Hinata. He says getting her attention. I have something to say and something to ask. You already know I have a bloodline, the Chakra Chain's bloodline, which makes me the last known member of the Uzumaki clan, so in order for the Uzumaki clan to survive, I have to have multiple wives. He says letting the information sink in, he then starts to get red and stutters out, I have developed more than friend feelings for you over the long time we have known each other. I would like to date you, but I had to let you know about that before we went any farther. Looking over to her face he sees her looking at him with a serious face, one that didn't show any anger. Then, she just smiled at him and began speaking, well I guess I never thought of it like that, but I have had strong feelings for you, and I know that we can make things work out. Hinata says almost tearing up at the special moment they are sharing together. There's a little more I have to tell you. He says as he hugs her, hoping that she really understands what he has to do. He really does love her, and he could imagine himself with her forever. I am required to have at least five to seven wives in the future. I hope that you can still be with me, and I hope you can accept the others that I may come to love as well. I love you too much. He says as he tightens his grip on her. She isn't too surprised at what was said as she was taught about how clans work and knew that he was the last of his. She also knows he will treat any woman that he comes to love equally. Okay, Naruto-kun I can accept that as long as you treat us all as equals, I love you too. She says and quickly and passionately kisses him on the lips. After that they sit on the fourth's head and watch the sunset and have a good conversation, both of them leave the mountain as happy as they could possibly get and head home for the night. The next morning Naruto wakes up with a huge smile on his face, having remembered what happened yesterday. Oh, I better see Kayashi-chan too. He says and enters his mind. 
He begins searching for her and sees her sleeping in a hammock in the forest. He gently creeps up to her and sees how cute she looks while sleeping and almost decides to let her sleep, but he kisses her on the lips anyway. She begins to open her eyes and kisses him back. Hmm, I could wake up this way every day. She says suggestively with a genuine smile on her face. What's up with Naruto-kun? She asks curiously as she can tell he looks a bit nervous. I have talked to Hinata-chan and she has agreed to try and work things out, so I have come to you to tell you that I love you and I would like it if you could also work with us to become a happy family. He says shocking her, but she lets a few tears drop form her beautiful face and hugs him tightly. Do you even have to ask, of course I'll be with you. Forever. She answers with as much conviction as she can muster, making him smile happily. Great. Is all he says before kissing her again. I couldn't imagine a world without having you right next to me in it, Kayashi-chan. I wouldn't be able to go on at all if I didn't have you to be there for me. He said honestly while Kayashi cried at his loving words to her. Sorry, but I have to go now and get ready for my test in an hour. I will see you later, Kayashi-chan. I couldn't live without you either, and I know you will treat everyone the same, so I can agree to let you have others, but not too many. Bye bye Naruto-kun she replies happily while making sure he understood not to have too many women. This is the best day in all my years of life. The next morning Naruto heads to the training ground that the team was supposed to meet at and is alone, being a couple minutes early. With his enhanced hearing he hears something flying towards him, with his eyes widened he moves his head out of the way. Not bad Naruto-kun. His sensei and hopefully girlfriend later, Anko calls out. Although I'm not really surprised at your level with all the training Nai-chan, Yu-chan, Tsun-chan, and I gave you all those years ago. Not to mention the training you did on your own during the academy. She says while grinning wildly. Can't you ever just say hello? He asks with some fake irritation, but then smiles with her. Anyway, it looks like the team is all here now. He says and just when he does, Sai and Kiba appear at his sides. HMPH, yay yay, well it looks like you would make a good team captain Naruto, what do you think Sai, Kiba? Anko asks, as she knows that he is the strongest and that Kiba would already follow his orders. I would follow him any time and any place. Kiba says while grinning with Akamaru barking in agreement, what do you think Sai, Naruto Taichu has? Sai seems to really think about this for a minute, I will agree with your judgment, Kiba. I will help you out with Naruto Taichu. He says calmly and with honesty. He knew that he shouldn't, but Danzo has always been harsh on him and the others in route, taking their emotions away and making them mindless drones. Sai, however, was lucky to not have been too far gone, and he didn't completely turn into the darkness to be able to have a shot at some amount of normalcy. He would much rather prefer to follow his brother Shin's ideals that he sees in Naruto. Then it's official, I will be the captain of this team in Anko's absence. Naruto replied confidently, making the others smile. Alright then team, let me explain your test to you. Anko replies with a grin that disturbs them a bit. This test will not be very easy, what you are going to do is find a man named Kakashi Haddock. Once you do you will have to retrieve and bring to me his orange book. Is that understood? Anko asks seriously. You will have until the end of today to achieve it, if you do it quickly we will do our first mission, now get to it. Then she shunshins away, not giving them any other help with the test. She wanted to give them a hard test after all. Alright team, first off do any of you know a Kakashi Haddock? Naruto asks as he takes charge of the situation, seeing that they named him captain. He is called the copycat ninja of Konoha, said to have copied over 1000. He has silver gravity defying hair, he wears his headband on a diagonal with it covering his left eye. He also has a black ninja mask covering his face up to the middle of his nose. He possesses a Sharingan in the eye socket he covers, but I don't know how he got it. Sai informs them of having to know all the high-level shinobi of their village and the others. He didn't think that he should have said all the information, but Danzo said to help in any way he could, and he didn't mind helping the blind for some reason. Good work Sai, any idea of where we could find him or how attached he is to this book of his. Naruto replies kindly to his new teammate, at first he really seemed weird, but with that help, he would give him a chance. Sai got a bit conflicted at Naruto's praise as he hadn't had much of it at all, but he quickly shook it off. It is said that he always has that book with him, so he is probably very attached to it. As to where he would be, I don't know. Alright, do you know about him at all Kiba? Naruto questions his other teammate. No idea Naruto Taichu, sorry. Don't worry about it, let's just head back to the village, we can then question people for information as he seems to be a pretty famous guy, and it's all we can really do for now, so let's get to it. Naruto commands calmly but not forcefully. Hi and they all get on their way. The team is now searching for this man named Kakashi Haddock throughout the village. They decided together that they should never split up to cover more ground. Naruto left a wireless headset with each of them, so he would be informed if they found something, and vice versa. 
He also made clones and them into random civilians and began asking around. He then suddenly thought that he could just ask the Hokage about Kakashi and went on his way there, hoping that the old man would give him something good. He immediately sets out there and gets there in only about 10 minutes, which is impressive with him starting at the other side of the village. Once entering his office, he greets his secretary friend, and he decided to not give away too much information, as he didn't think he would get help if the old man knew it was his test. He looks up to see the old man sitting behind the desk like he usually is and asks, Hey Gigi, I had heard some rumors about a guy named Kakashi Haddock. I heard he was a really good nin at ninjutsu, and I was wondering if he could show me a thing or two. He asked, trying to sound convincing, which he did with all of the things he went through in life. Kakashi you say, hm I could probably point you to several locations in the village, he says while not seeing that question as being strange knowing their sensei. He had already had an idea of her test and he decided to help out. He then gets a map out and points to three places that he knows Kakashi likes to visit. Alright, thanks old man. Naruto says as he shunshins out of the room and starts to head to the first location while informing his team members. Hey guys I have three places to look, I asked a Hokage. Kiba heads over to the bookstore on the west side of the village, Sai goes to the bars on the eastern edge, and I will head to training ground 7. If you don't spot him in either of those places, meet me at training ground 7, you guys got it. He says speaking into the headset he is wearing. Got it Naruto Taichu, I'm heading to the bookstore now, good luck. Kiba replies. Yes Taicho, I will head to the park now. Sai replies. Good luck team. Naruto says as he gets to the location of training ground 7. Near training ground 7, Naruto goes into stealth mode. He jumps to the trees and suppresses his chakra, so he is not discovered. Looking around the field, the only things he can see are three training posts and a lake on the right side of the field. I don't really see anything, but maybe I haven't checked enough yet. He thinks to himself. As he is restarting his search, Kiba and Sed both are having similar results in their searches. They decide that they will look around for about five more minutes and head to training ground 7 and regroup with Naruto. Back with Naruto, it has now been about three more minutes and still nothing until out of the corner of his eye, he sees a man. He can only see his back, but he had the same type of hair that Sai described to him. This could be him, let's check it out. He moved to a better location as quietly as he could and saw the same diagonal headband and mask from the description. He was just standing in front of some kind of stone with his hands in his pockets looking depressed. Hey, guys I got eyes on the man matching our target's information. He is at the training grounds and starts heading here. I don't know when he will be leaving, so really run to get here. What we're gonna do is have both of you attack him from the east and west while I jump in and attack him from behind, do you guys understand the plan? He says quietly so he doesn't give up his position behind Kakashi who is really lost in thought. I got it loud and clear. Let's do this. Kiba says with his normal enthusiasm. Understood. Sai responds after him while thinking that the plan is a really good one. Good, how much time will it take you guys to get here? Their captain asks again. Five minutes tops. Kiba replies. I'll be there in two. Sai responds. Alright, we'll wake up for you Kiba, we are all in this together. There are no lone wolves on this test. Naruto responds with his normal leader-like voice, which gives them extra confidence. Hi they reply both sounding a bit excited at this. After all, it is just the beginning of their first mission together. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the other videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.